Live from the Bob Levy Broadcast Center, overlooking the Tom's River, it's time to get up, get out, do something. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Be a part of the show, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Hey, welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin, 707, Tuesday, November 22nd, 38 degrees, getting up to 46 today. WOBMAM 1160, 13, News Talk Radio, streaming live on the radio, pop app, and WOBMAM.com, 732-505-1160 to join the conversation. We are now joined by Terry Risley. She is a clinical dietitian at Community Medical Center, right? My, That's correct. You're making that look like I am? Yeah. Oh, no. Or what, which, which part <laughs> no, did I, I get wrong? I am. Okay. Everything's right. All right, good. Uh, and so, okay, clinical dietitian, what do you do at the hospital? Um, so at the hospital, I work with patients that are that are there um, in patients with um, a lot of times it's on diet education for when they go home. Sometimes it's um, if they come in with malnutrition, we try to get build them up and get them stronger. And I also do outpatient nutrition counseling at the hospital for various um, disease states and weight loss. And I also teach the nutrition class in the cardiac rehab program. Okay, cool. So, so I always think my my um, my kind of knee jerk reaction when I hear a dietitian is I never want to go out to dinner with you, right? Because <laughs> you're going to be like judging everything I eat and everything like that. So is that the case, or no. like do you can you, you can you eat normal and all? Yes, that? you can yeah. eat normal. I'm I'm actually a very fun dinner partner. Okay. So. All right, good. So, all right, well, that, we got that out of the way. All right, now, now, how do you decide that you want to go into this? I mean, so, so, you know, I, I, I kind of always am interested in how mm. people kind of. What's your background that you mm. said? Listen, I really want to do this for a living. I want to help people make better food choices and and be healthier. So, where did that start? When I, um, I always, I always felt I was going to lean into a, the, you know, the healthcare field, and so I went to University of Delaware. And they had nutrition and dietetics major, and I thought, you know, let me look into this. And I, I did some classes, and I liked it, and that's how it all started. Really? So yes. you were undecided when you went to college? Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and university, and University of Delaware, we know, is a huge party school. That's correct. So yeah. So it's so, okay. Well, we'll we'll leave that one alone. Also, uh, so I found something good. All right. So uh, so so University of Delaware now now. With kids now, we don't let kids ever go to school without knowing what they want to do with their lives, right? I mean, that was something that we did like back when we were going mm-hmm. to college, right? You decided to be a dietitian. Mm-hmm. I decided to drop out and uh, and work in retail. Right. So there you go. All right. So we are we have you here today because we need to go figure out how we are going to avoid the pitfalls of the next month and a half, right? Because mm-hmm. this is this is like this, this is season. crunch time, right? So. Uh, we have some tips for uh, uh, attending holiday parties, mm-hmm. as an example. So give me some things that you can do when you're going to a holiday party. So one thing that you can do is um, when you get there, you can try to not hang out where all the food is. So you can kind of divert yourself, talk to people, um, you know, go into another room. You know, like when you have a party, everybody's hanging out in the kitchen right. with the food right, right. right in front of you. So you can kind of um, go go somewhere else. Another thing you can do is um, maybe try, to, if you're hosting the party, make sure that you have some healthy food there. If you are a guest, you can bring something that's healthy. And by healthy, it could be anything from, you know, fruits, vegetables, um, maybe a baked appetizer instead of something fried. So just a lot of common sense things. Right. And I see one of that you say is never arrive hungry. Right. So that's like the that's like also the the rule for when you go food shopping, right? Exactly. Never go food yes. shopping hungry because yes. then you buy then you're everything. Buy everything, and that's actually that's actually true. It's impulse buying. Right. Okay. So don't arrive hungry, and then it says limit alcohol. So I don't know mm-hmm. that people think about this so much, but mm-hmm. is is that like a is that a problem? Um, you know, diet wise. Well, just for calories. So alcohol, even though uh, like a lot of times when I'm I'm doing the nutrition counseling, people say, well. You know, vodka doesn't have any carbs in it, but it has calories. Right. And then a lot of times we will put mixers in, like juices that are that are high in sugar or, um, you know, there's some some of the holiday, you know, special drinks that are out there, like maybe some holiday sangrias um, or margaritas could have as much as 500 calories for one serving. Right. 
But <laughs> but see, that's why I drink scotch. Okay. Right, because scotch is only 80 calories per for, serving for one and a half ounces. Yeah, yeah. So and that and then I'm good, right? <laughs> right. I don't have right. to. You could put some club soda in that. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, sc- so, club soda. Does, do people do that? I don't know. I don't drink scotch. Oh, with club soda. I hate the smell of it. Yeah, but you get used to it. You see, this is like uh, this is me being disciplined because I've I've conditioned myself this way. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. So so what does it mean when you say like stay active at a holiday party? What does that mean? Well, you could dance. If there's music, you could dance. Right. Um, also, as far as, as, as activities, I mean, it depends on what's going on. Like sometimes for, um, you know, like Thanksgiving, people will go out and play football or kickball or something in between the courses, go right. for a walk, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. It gets cold out though. I mean, the, the, it does, the, but, but yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Right. Yeah. I think, I, I do think it's funny when you're like, <laughs> if everybody's hanging out in the kitchen, go somewhere else. Like, wait, I just went to a party to hang right. out with a bunch well, of no, friends. Well, no, you can bring them into, you can bring them with oh, you. Oh, so you're like, room. Hey. How does that conversation look? You're like, hey, listen, I'm really trying not to put on a lot of weight this holiday season. Can, so we, can, bring, can we bring this conversation into a room that doesn't have food come in Come sit it? in the basement with yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, come on. Let's go hang out somewhere where you haven't staged food. Because don't you, when you have a party at your house, don't you put food in every room? I try to, yes. yeah. Yeah, yes, so, because I can't stand people in the kitchen breathing down my neck right. while I'm trying to get things done. So you're trying, you're working on, you're working on the flow of traffic, right? Mm-hmm. So it's part, mm-hmm. all part of the day. Okay. So... So, so we figured out how to deal with a party, some strategies, mm-hmm. right? Which we all know we're going to, you know, we hope that everybody has some because we hope you have friends and you get invited to some parties. Okay. If not, just, <laughs> just invite your own friends. All right. So how about some, some everyday tips? All right. For example, uh, how do you, I think a lot of people struggle with us being on the go, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So when you're always on the go, how do you manage mm-hmm. to stay, to eat healthy mm-hmm. and stay healthy, especially at the holidays when you're working extra mm-hmm. hours because everything's busy mm-hmm. and then you're shopping and then you're working and then the kids and then there's parties mm-hmm. and then when, and you're always on the go, what do you do? And that's exactly true. It's hard when, when it's hard enough to eat healthy in a normal schedule, but the holiday schedule makes it more difficult. And so, um, if you can, you know, when you have time, if you can maybe prep for your dinner the night before or in the morning, um, make sure that you might stock up on some convenience type things like maybe um, vegetables that are already bagged and you can just uh, put them right in the microwave. Um, uh, maybe maybe like if you pre-cook something the night before just to heat it up because that's the worst thing is when you've had a long day and if you're going to a holiday shopping after work, when you come home, it's very easy just to pick up the phone and do a takeout rather right. than make something. Yeah. My my wife has this strategy where she um she has I, every time she opens her pocketbook you see a bag of Cheerios, mm-hmm. right? She is like she is like pounding Cheerios mm-hmm. all day long because that's like healthy and it like you know keeps her like you know they mm-hmm. say m- small meals and keep right. eating kind of all throughout. Right. So she grazes on Cheerios mm-hmm. all day long right. and it's been uh. I make fun of her, of course, because she eats more Cheerios than the average two-year-old. But, um, <laughs> and that's actually a good point because you don't want to skip meals. Because right. if, you, if you're busy all day and you don't eat breakfast and lunch, when you get home, you're just going to be grabbing at whatever you can. And oftentimes, it's not going to be something healthy. Right. Tell me about this breakfast thing, right? Because okay. I always hear, you know, we always hear that breakfast is really important, mm-hmm. most important meal of the day. Why is it so important? Well, when you get up in the morning, your body's been fasting all night. So breakfast kind of breaks the fast. That's, that's why it's called that. Breakfast. Look at that. Okay. And so it actually starts your um, metabolism going. So, um, and also it gives you some energy throughout the day. There's, um, there's, are, there are some cl- conflicting reports about should you eat breakfast or shouldn't. I think you should. I think it's good to start with a breakfast, maybe a whole grain breakfast um, and, and some uh, protein, some fruit, and um, maybe avoid anything that's high in sugar, that kind of thing. So start starting out with a healthy breakfast and then... Um, Otherwise, if you skip breakfast, then you get to the office and maybe there's donuts or yeah. something that somebody brings in. Yeah, How about that's... that 3 a.m. breakfast? What's is, that that? A, 3... is that normal? 3 a.m. Yeah. breakfast? We do a, we do a 3 a.m. breakfast. Oh, cause because you're up early. Yeah. So, so like, I don't know about you. So Zach is different because Zach... Zach, Zach, how tall are you? What are you, 6'3"? And he's young. Yeah, about. So yeah. Zach is 6'3 and weighs like 140 pounds, okay? <laughs> and he's like a runner and he's like, you know, whatever. So I look at him and it's upsetting. Yeah, okay, he's 23 years old, whatever, fine. Um, for me, I, I, either, you know that Taco Bell commercial where they say it's fourth meal? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I get to fourth meal by about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Like so. we're already there because it's like, you know, you mm-hmm. have the you have the 3.30 meal, oh, the 4 a.m. meal, 
right? Like you got to eat something before the the show. Sometimes I have to skip that one though. It's a weird you? time to eat. Yeah, you sometimes eat I'll here? just go coffee uh, and then I'll eat afterward. Oh, uh, that's no good. I don't, right. think, I don't think I could eat at three in the morning. Breakfast. No, but you have to. You have to see. This is what I'm saying. I force myself. I force myself to down a bagel. <laughs> at, at, because I need I need the energy I need the energy to entertain our listener friends anyway Terry Risley clinical dietitian community medical center when we come back right um, I want to talk uh, about two things number one I want to talk about positivity right and because mm-hmm. I know it's it's um, it's easy to get into the vortex of negativity and that just kind of keeps compounding mm-hmm. itself but I also want to talk about uh, some recipe stuff, like what you could do to to, to keep recipes healthier, mm-hmm. right? Could we do that? Yes, we can. Cool. Terry Risley, Clinical Dietitian, Community Medical Center. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin back after this. Rush Limbaugh today at noon. More Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin coming up next. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Make a difference at the Jersey Shore. 732-505-1160. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160, 1310, and WOBMAM.com. Hey, welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin here with Terry Risley, clinical dietitian, community medical center. So in the break, uh, I was told that I was not doing well by <laughs> eating and driving. So explain that to me. What does that mean? So when you're when you're driving and you're eating, you're not really paying attention to what you're eating. So what happens is is you don't feel like you really enjoyed your meal, and so you might eat more at the next place you go to. You might eat again at the next place you go to, or you might forget how many calories you've actually eaten or that kind right. of thing. See, now I look at it a different way, right? Because I think when you eat while you're driving, <laughs> right, you have to make different choices, right? I'll explain. Okay. Right. So, like, <laughs> if I am going and I'm getting, like, and I'm going to, let's say, like, some health food store, like, like let's call it McDonald's. For okay. the sake of for the sake of the, this discussion, right? <laughs> There's no chance that I'm getting a Big Mac, right? Because a Big Mac is sloppy, right? I can't <laughs> hold it comfortably, and I'm probably going to spill it all over myself, right? So instead, I make the healthier choice of the grilled chicken sandwich, or maybe just a simple hamburger. So I think it actually regulates. And you're like, for you? no, for you, you're that, like, none of that is for, any good for, for, for you that if that if you're going to choose a grilled chicken over a Big Mac, then keep, grilled eating, chicken's okay, keep right? eating in your car. All right, good. See, <laughs> see, it's all about strategy. All right. And that's good. So so and I like that because we we segue into staying positive. Right. Mm-hmm. So what happens to people that when they when they make a bad choice or when they feel bad about what they've done? And that's it, it's a good point, because a lot of times when people have the idea that they're going to eat healthy the whole holiday season or they're going to eat healthy at whatever party they're going to. And then they don't, you know, for whatever reason, they hang around the food too much or they, you know, put some some uh, have that extra drink or whatever it is. Right. They feel bad about themselves. And then when a lot of people feel bad about themselves, they eat to feel right. better. And so it becomes it becomes a cycle. And then a lot of people say, well, this is too hard. I'll just start again on January 1st. And so um, a lot of times when I do my outpatient nutrition counseling, I'll, I'll work with the, with the clients and I'll tell them there's 21 meals in a week. You don't have to be perfect for all 21 meals. No one's perfect. I'm not perfect. Your doctors aren't perfect. Right. We, we all eat. So it's better if you, if you, you know, plan to eat healthy and you mess up the next day, start all over again. Right. And, and that's so, – so you brought up a good point there psychologically as well. Mm-hmm. I always, I've always thought – that the differentiator between people who struggle with weight and people that don't struggle with mm-hmm. weight is there's a group of folks that when they're stressed or when things are when when they feel pressure mm-hmm. they eat mm-hmm. they look at food as like as like a comfort thing or a crutch or something like that and then there's the group that when they're pressured or when they're like you know stressed they can't eat mm-hmm. because they're like sick a to bowl, their yeah they're, they're they're like I can't even eat right now mm-hmm. right and I'm like what do you mean you can't even eat right now that's exactly <laughs> what I want to eat right is that do you find that there's a, a a psyche to it as well yes definitely and a lot of times it's it's habits that we've had lifelong habits and so they're hard to break and a lot of people do use food to feel better or it just it's just something easy it's right there so if you're mad at somebody or if you're you're stressed about something it's easy just to have something to eat and feel better and and get yourself um in a different in a different level so a lot of people do use food for that and so you know and these are these are habits that will that we try to work on and so maybe trying to find something else 
um, when you're mad or something else when you're upset, calling a friend, you know, even exercise if it's if it's something that you can do at that time, you know, going out, getting fresh air, just a lot of a lot of simple things other than eating. Right. And what do you do from a from a, a recipe standpoint? Um, you know, I, I know that there's uh, there's mm-hmm. you know there, that there are things that we can do mm-hmm. to kind of make sh- to keep to preserve taste, but mm-hmm. to also right. uh, avoid being unhealthy. Mm-hmm. And those are that's a, a good point too. One thing you said was preserve taste because you if you make something and you try to make it healthy and it doesn't taste good, you might eat it. Other people might eat it, but then you're going to want something else after right. that. So I think it's a good idea to maybe experiment with recipes. So if I was if I'm having I'm having Thanksgiving, I'm I'm maybe not going to just pull something online that I've never eaten before and give it to my guests. And what you can do to make recipes more healthy is you can um, try to try to when you're shopping in the grocery store, read your food labels right. and try to pick out the th- uh, stuff that's lower in sodium, lower in fat. You can use, um, for example, if you're making a dip, you can use a Greek yogurt ah. as opposed to um, a sour cream. Very nice. Um, Very good. So when we come back, I want to talk about sodium, right? Because I yes. think that's one that mm-hmm. we don't talk a lot about. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we talk a lot about sugar. We talk a lot about calories. But salt is uh, salt's a tough one, especially when you talk about a hospital environment, right? Yes. Cool. Uh, Terry Risley, clinical dietitian. Wake up with Jeremy Grant and listen to the hometown view and the news and then come on back with us. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Live from Town Square Towers at the heart of the Jersey Shore, wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Get up, get out, do something. Join the conversation, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Hey, welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. 7.35, Tuesday, November 22nd, 38 degrees, getting up to 46 today. WOBMAM, 1160, 13, News Talk Radio, stream 11, the radio pop app, and WOBMAM.com. 732-505-1160. To join our conversation, we are joined by Terry Risley. She is a clinical dietitian at Community Medical Center, working with inpatients, outpatients, side patients, upside down <laughs> patients. So uh, we were talking about salt, right? Uh, what's mm-hmm. the... Uh, what? So, so how, why why should you avo- avoid salt? Number one, it, important to avoid salt, especially if you have um, high blood pressure, congestive heart failure, kidney disease, because those are too much salt can actually make um, those conditions worse. Um, if you're trying to lose weight, uh, when you eat salt, you retain fluids, and and that shows up as weight. So um, those are those are all reasons. Most most of most of the time, people are eating too much salt without knowing it because just because they're not putting the salt on their food, they're not realizing that it's already in a lot of the foods that they're eating. It's been put in by the right. manufacturer. Right. What are some? Are there are there some like high sodium uh, like holiday type foods that you know that we would see a lot of a lot of salt in? Lots. So. Um, a lot of, um, like for example, gravies and sauces are all going to have a lot, a lot of uh, salt in them. So if you're making them, you can use less salt, and you can add things like fresh herb, you know, um, you know, seasonal things like rosemary, sage. You can you can add those things and put less salt. If you're baking, so if you're baking your holiday cookies and you try to keep the salt out, your cookies won't work. Out. Right. So, right. so you you have to follow the recipe when you're baking for the salt. But if you're making something, you can easily put less salt in and then just adjust it with other seasonings that you like. Right. And there's different kind of butters you could use too, mm-hmm. which are lower sodium as well. Actually, right? butter, um, unsalted butter versus salted butter, there's not that big of a difference. Really? Yeah. Big taste like, difference. No, though. it's a big it's a big taste difference. God. It is. But um, but if you look at the labels, there's really not that much of a difference. But butter is high in saturated fat, so you should just be using less of it, salted or unsalted. Right. Um, and the other thing I just wanted to talk about is, you know, we talk, uh, you know, we talk about sweets and we all know that sweets are, you know, you have to be careful. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and mm-hmm. this is a big time for that. Right. Um, but but tell me also, you know, we were talking a little bit about uh, uh, about keeping it for special occasions. What does mm-hmm. that mean? So the the thing with with desserts, we were talking before about maybe not using sweets as a reward. So if something good happens instead of rewarding with with sweets, you know, try try something else. But there's nothing wrong with having a sweet treat 
you know, once a day or, you know, whatever, whatever works for you, you know, a couple times a week. It depends on, on how strict of a meal plan, a diet meal plan that you have to be on. And um, the other thing that, that we didn't talk a lot about for all of this is just portion control. So it's maybe the size. So maybe sharing a dessert or maybe right. just sampling something instead of having a great big piece of pie or, or, or trying every dessert that's out there. Right. Right. That's a good point. It, it's, it's so hard, though. I mean, you mm-hmm. find yourself... You, know, you find yourself at some of these parties just like standing next to a dish of something and like mindlessly mm-hmm. just grabbing one after another. And then right. you realize you're like, oh, my God, what did I just do? Right. And, uh, and and you're in trouble. Yeah. And what's hard about the holidays, too, is for a lot of us, these aren't foods that we have all the time. So you're right. not going to get these foods again until the next holiday comes around. So probably um, the best suggestion for that, for like, for like a, a family dinner or a holiday dinner, is to just try to eat you know, better during the day, right. l- lower fat, lower sodium, and then just try to portion control the foods that you like because it is the holiday season and we do want to be healthy, but we also want to enjoy um, in- enjoy what we're eating. Yeah, because like eggnog is probably like the worst, right. like it's probably the worst thing you could ever put right. in your body, right? There, I mean, there are, you can make it a little healthier. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm talking about like we go to Wawa and you like get the eggnog okay. thing and it's like, like in the like in the carton. I mean that's pretty much right. just like you might as well just like like pound lard into your system, right? right? I mean right. that's so, pretty yeah. much what that is. All right. Uh it's that time where we give you your magic wand, your pixie okay. dust, your fairy dust, your ability mm-hmm. just to wiggle your nose and make something happen. Mm-hmm. Terry Risley, clinical dietitian, community medical center. What are you doing with that wand? So I I think for the for the for the wand, if everybody can just wave their wand and try to be kind to themselves. And um, I don't really think that you can spread kindness throughout the world if you don't if you're not good to yourself. And so whether that be, you know, eating your exercise program, you know, day to day, um, I think you have to be good to yourself. Very good. Very good. All right. Where could folks learn more uh, about, uh, you know, about diet or, or how can they how can they learn can, about the outpatient mm-hmm. nutrition program? You can contact us at Community Medical Center uh, 732 five five seven eight thousand and it's extension one one four eight four right and of course you can always go to barnabashealth.org forward slash community or of course on facebook.com and look up community medical uh well listen terry risley uh i am uh listen i think i'm gonna hang out with you for the holidays because that way you keep me in (laughs) check because uh god knows i don't do a great job eating when it's not the holidays so it's only it's only more frightening as we get closer to the holidays but thank you for helping us out this morning thanks for having me cool back with more wake up with jeremy grunin right after this